Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about understanding. And I just noticed I have a little, aside, a little rainbow on my face. You might have said I have little window um, sun crystals in my windows and um, putting rainbows everywhere. And this morning it's right on my face. So if you're wondering, that's why. Um, so we're going to be talking about understanding today. And I'm going to be telling you a story, but this time it is a true story um, told by a man named Razik Brown in an interview. So he received a Young Activist Award. He's only 19 years old when he, when he told the story. And he is an activist um, that has traveled around the world doing wonderful things. And he tells the story of when he was only 14, how he be start, first got that initial spark that started him down the road of social activism. So his name is Razik Brown. It was 2018, he received this award when he was 19. And this is the story that he tells. I started attending anti-racism and anti-oppression workshops when I was 14 years old. That's when I met ministers who said they were involved in social justice. I had heard the term social justice before, but I really didn't know what it meant. Then I went to Sierra Leone in Africa, which is where my mom is from. Freetown, Sierra Leone, uh, Sierra Leone was eerily like a surf system. You had people who had money, and the only way people without money could get, get money was to work for the people who had the money, so as servants or whatever. I visited at Christmas. This opened my eyes to how socialized and corporatized Christmas is in the United States. Don't get me wrong, I love Christmas, but at the same time, Sierra Leone was the poorest nation in the world, and I had seen poverty before, but I'd never seen poverty like that before. There was no sanitation, the electricity went in and out, and there were literally kids starving in the streets. Christmas in that setting was completely different. I had these feelings of knowing that I wanted to do something, but what could I do? I was only 15 years old at the time. I could have given away all my money to some people on the streets, but there would have been more people asking for more money the next day. So the point, I believed that the world was really great, but I was seeing that the world wasn't the same for everybody, like it should be, which got me thinking. Then one day at a house down the road from where my aunt lived, I saw that a little boy was really cut up after falling out of a tree. He was probably three years old, and I asked his older brother, who was probably about 18, to take him to the hospital. But it turned out the family didn't have any money, so they couldn't. Well, I saw the little boy a few times over the next couple days, and he wasn't looking good at all. And then I walked past their house, and I saw this little boy lying in a pool of his own vomit with flies flying all around him, and he was green. He had gangrene, uh, which is a really bad infection. And it just hit me, oh, this is how little kids die. This is what a high child morality rate looks like. It's right there in front of them. This is something that actually happens in the world. And I went straight to my aunt, who I knew had the money, and asked her to help this family by giving them money for the hospital. She did, and three days later, this little boy is running around like nothing's happened. And that's how I started to figure out what social justice means, and that it begins with me, with all of us. To me, peace isn't about feeling good all the time. It's about making tough, tough, tough decisions. No higher power figures it out for you. You can't take the easy way out. You've got to figure it out for yourself. So those are the words of Radik Brown. So did he experience anything in Sierra Leone, in Sierra, Sierra Leone that we would consider unjust? Um, I would say certainly he saw the, just the fact of people not having enough to eat and the starving kids he saw in the streets, that in itself is unjust. And the fact that this boy who got this gangrene infection, they couldn't do any of the family, couldn't, didn't have the money to take him to the hospital. Um, in spite of all the people around them that had money, they couldn't, and he was nearly, he nearly died. Um, so Razik saw this, 
and he used his spheres of influence. Remember last week we talked about spheres of influence, so which spheres of influence did he use in this story? Well, he saw this little boy that was a part of his larger community, right? And then he realized he couldn't do it by himself, right? He needed help. He didn't personally have that money, but he used the sphere of influence of his close family, his aunt, and he explained to his aunt and talked to his aunt about what he had seen, and his aunt helped him. So he reached out to help um, for help from his aunt. And his aunt gave him the money because we can't we can't do always do things and make a difference by ourselves. We often have to ask for help um, for help from other people. So do you think Rizik um, got gained any understanding? from this from this experience he probably understood some things after the trip that he had never thought of before he'd gone on this trip and what might some of those things be um well certainly he didn't realize remember he said like he loved christmas but he didn't and he understood that some people were poor but he didn't realize how poor they could be and just to, he didn't under, understand what that meant that they don't have enough food that they don't always have electricity um, he didn't realize, have that understanding of what it actually meant until he saw it and was there for himself. And, or understanding that something like a little cut from a fall, if you're poor and don't have money, that could have led to the death of this child. And he didn't have that understanding before. I think the biggest thing that understanding that he gained from that experience was that he was personally able to make a difference. At first he felt so frustrated, right? Because he saw all these horrible things happening. He wanted to do something, but he didn't know what he could do. But then he found a way. He took just one simple step and helped one person. And he realized by helping that one person and reaching out to others for help to do that, that he could make a difference. All right, next, I'm gonna show you some images. These images are pretty nice, huh? But they're by professional artists. I like this one, the shade, a stream, a courtyard. Now you might think, yeah, those are, those are pretty nice. I like that ballerina. What's amazing about these images is this artwork was all created by people who are not able to use their hands. So to paint these, they painted them with either their mouths or their feet. Look at that, can you imagine? How do they do that? They don't have the ability to use their arms and yet they made this beautiful artwork. It's pretty impressive. So we're gonna do a little activity and that activity is for you to draw with your mouth or your foot. So I'm go ahead and gather some materials. I found a marker worked better than a pencil or pen. Um, it just put the ink better on the paper. And go ahead and try, take your socks off, try drawing with your foot, um, try drawing with your mouth. You might want to do your mouth first because you don't want to like put the marker in your mouth after having it in your foot or just make sure you wash the end off in between might be a good idea so go ahead and pause the video and try drawing find some paper and markers and try drawing with your mouth and your foot and i will see you when you're done okay so hopefully by now you have tried the activity and tried to draw with your mouth and your foot. How did it go? I'm going to show you mine. I did mine earlier and, and I'm actually sort of proud of my flower. So first I did the, um, I tried to write my name with my foot and that's how it came out. Oh, you can actually, can actually read it. So I, I'm sort of proud of that. So when I started that age, wow, this is really hard. And then the flower I did, with my mouth and I sort of like it's sort of abstract looking and whatever and it didn't turn out at all how I had anticipated um but I do sort of like it actually I sort of like it sort of 
it's sort of fun. I like how it came out. But, so how did you feel when you were, whoops, better, um, there we are. How did you feel when you were trying to draw with your mouth? With what? I know for me, when I first started doing that H with my toes, I felt really frustrated because I was trying to do something that should be easy. Like, you know, I've been known, known how to draw an H on a piece of paper for a pretty long time now. And all of a sudden, it was really hard. All of a sudden, I couldn't do it. And it was frustrating. It's like, why can't I just do this? Um, so I felt so less capable of what I was to do something. It seemed that should be so simple. Um, so think about someone, think about school, maybe your, yourself or someone else in school that has trouble with really, has a whole lot of trouble with one particular subject. They might be really bad at math, but they might write wonderful poetry or they may have no artistic skills, whatever, whatsoever. Maybe you or one of your friends is one of those people who, to draw a person, it's always just a stick figure, but might be really good at sports. Or maybe, you know, they're just really good at, um, in science. So everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses, right? And sometimes it's being good in one subject in school and not so good in another. Or sometimes it's um, something bigger, like not having arms. Um, but still having a wonderful artistic sense and being able to express that by painting and drawing with your mouth, you know, your foot. Um, think about if there's been any times when you've glimpsed what life may be like um, for someone who has different sorts of challenges than you might have. I remember one time when I was a kid, I had to in school, we did a thing where you had to go down the hallway in a wheelchair, just going down the hallway, and then I came to a door. And it was really hard to open the door because I'm in this chair that moves and I couldn't do it. And someone offered to open the door for me that was going by. And I said no, because one, I was I know, I'm supposed to do it myself, but I didn't like to get help from people. I said, no, I'll do it myself. So it was really interesting. And then in college, I remember I had trouble with my knee. I was on crutches for a while. And I could handle a couple of little steps, but if there was a big set of um, big staircase, it was really d difficult. And I learned in just those couple weeks I was on crutches exactly where all the stairs were on campuses and exactly where all the ramps were because it was really challenging. And I saw the world, even though it was, it was just a couple of weeks that I was on crutches, I saw the world in a very different way and I had a new understanding for what other people might go through. So the point of this exercise was just to try to gain a tiny, tiny bit of understanding about different challenges that different people have and other things that, you know, other things that people have to go through. Just like with this story, Razik, he saw the world from a new perspective and had a new understanding when he was in a place where there was very little money and people were suffering to a great degree that he hadn't seen before. So what's this have to do with social justice? Well, by having a better understanding of what other people are going through, um, you can, it makes it easier for you to talk with them. You still, still may not agree with what they think, but at least you understand where they're coming from and can better appreciate what they have to deal with. People are dealing with all sorts of things, whether they're struggling with a certain subject in school, whether they're differently abled and don't have the ability to use their arms, or whether it's something you can't see. Maybe they have other health issues that are more subtle that you, that you can't see, or maybe it's a kid in school that has a really troubled home life and you have no idea, but they're going through all these things that you may not understand. So everyone is facing their own struggles in different ways. Some of them you can see and some of them you can't. By understanding, um, having a little bit of understanding of what they might be going through or what they might have to deal with, then you can better talk to them and have discussions with them. So I am going to end with a quote by Harriet Tubman, just because it's a wonderful quotation. 
Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars, to change the world. So that is it for this week. Be kind, be well, and I will see you next time.